is in our midst here this morning in this service feel his presence among his people Bible said where two or three are gathered together there he'll be in the midst of them and I'm proud this morning that he's here we can do nothing without him uh, and I do appreciate your prayers for my mom's family uh, my aunt passed away as brother Keith said about 1130 yesterday morning and I, now I'm only assuming this but sometime this week I suppose uh, the funeral and visitation both will be here at the church I do not know any dates yet uh, but uh, we do appreciate your prayers I'll be doing the service there so be praying for us if you have your Bible this morning turn with me to Psalms 137 this morning Psalms 137 church we're serving a God that can do anything And I have uh, been up early, been up for a while, been praying, been talking to God, been going back and forth from Scripture to Scripture. I feel like God has said something to our heart here in the last little bit of time, but Psalms 137, we're going to read this chapter to you this morning. It said, For by the river of Babylon, rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. And yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive. And they required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us myrrh, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. For how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? For if we forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. And if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. For if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. For who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against us the stones. Would you pray with us this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you again, God, for the wonderful privilege that we have to be in your house this morning. I pray, God, now, Lord, as I have throughout this morning, God, that you would anoint these lips of clay, God, one more time, Jesus, to preach your holy word. I pray, God, that you've already been speaking to hearts and lives, God, even before this day began. And I pray, God, you speak to us now. Lord, use us for your glory. Use us, God, the way that you would have us to go. Lord, speak to us and through us. And we ask these things in the powerful, mighty name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Said for by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps on the willows in the midst thereof. And there and there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. Child of God, as I begin to read that this morning and I begin to realize they had been taken away from their homeland. They had been taken away now from everything that they had known and been taken to a strange land and been carried captive there. And they came unto them and they required of them a song, but they had done something very unique there. The Bible said that they had hanged their harps by the willow. I've preached from this and read this several times in the course of ministry. But as I begin to look at that, they had done something there. They'd taken that harp and they'd hung it up. Now a harp in the word of God, we can look through the word, but it's a representation of worship. Now these folks had taken that harp. This was a representation when they'd go and play upon that. They would worship God. That harp now had been hung up. The worship wasn't there like it had been in a time past. He said to them, they required of us a 
song, but it's a strange land here to them. How can we sing that? I begin to think, child of God, how in this age that we live in, the enemy of our soul wants you and I most desperately to hang our harp on the willow and to silence our songs that we have in Jesus Christ. But old friend of mine this morning, worship is very vital to our spiritual man as air is to this fleshly body that you and I have. We all know this morning beyond a shadow of a doubt that if air leaves these lungs that it's only a matter of just a very short period of time till this fleshly body is going to die. You and I know very well when this heart stops and these lungs quit then the brain, the oxygen flow that goes there, the brain then will die from that and child of God then that person is declared clinically dead but oh friend when we stop to worship God and we quit praising God and we quit calling upon him to the spiritual man a man will spiritually die but oh brother sister this morning I believe God saying to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ worship me again as I came in here this morning and I sat in in the latter part of Sunday school and I listened to our Sunday school class and our lesson. I thought about the days that awaits this world ahead of you and I. Friend, they're dark at best. When we look out there, we read down through the word of God and we understanding what the word tells you and I that perilous times truly is coming on this old earth. But friend of mine, for the child of God, joy comes in the morning. Amen. Man, when we pass from this life to the next, it's a joyous time for the hope of the child of God. You and I have got something to worship God about. Why is it in this age that we cease to do it? Why is it in this hour that we sit back and say, well, maybe next week I'll feel like it. Friend, if we wait until we feel like it, we never will. We've hung the harp up there and we've said not today Lord but some other day maybe I feel like it but you realize the reason that they wasn't saying and the Bible said that they had been taken captive there I begin to think about that long early this morning about being taken captive and being taken off there friend of mine Jesus Christ the writer in John tells us Jesus spoke these words in the book of John in 8 chapter 8 he, the Bible said, to whomsoever Jesus did, the Bible said, to whomsoever the Son sets free, the Bible said, He's free indeed. I want to be free in Jesus Christ, don't you? I want to know that where I, where He is, there's freedom, there's liberty. The Bible said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And I can tell you that, friend, from experience. But I can also tell you this: there's people that live their life, their bound by all sorts of things. There's people that's bound by addiction. There's people that's bound by all kinds of habit and sin. There's people that go through their life with the good intention that someday in my life I'll get this thing under the blood. I'll get this thing taken care of. What are they doing, preacher? They're living their life in captivity. Can I tell you a man or a woman that's in captivity? They have no freedom. They may have a little lead way now and again to move about but they have no freedom in Christ. Amen. And brother I can tell you this this morning. When we're free in him the Bible said we're free indeed. I begin to think about that. I begin to think about people that's bound by things. There's a world of people out there that's bound by the past. Amen. They're bound by the things that's transpired in their life. By things that's happened to them through the past stages of time and they hold on to those things and that past binds them down for the future and they cannot move in the spirit of God the way God wants them to move. Why? Because they're bound by that old past and the things that's there. The Bible teaches you and I believe it's Wednesday night that I mentioned it or Sunday night or just a few nights ago but I mentioned this to you and I. The Bible said as far as Jesus cast our sin as far as as the east is from the west and he remembered
remembers him no more. Friend, when we come to Christ and we give our life to him, we can rest assured that through the works of Jesus Christ that we have freedom. The enemy of our soul comes by from time to time just for, to me like it does to you to remind us of that past and the things that's there and certainly the failures that's there as well. But oh friend, when we realize that oh by the blood of Jesus Christ I, I came to him and I've received him fully into my life then we can realize that there's freedom in that right there. I begin to think about this this morning as I read this passage of scripture in Psalm 137 and verse number 2 said we hanged our harp on the willow. Church there's no place in the word of God do you find for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to ever quit moving forward. Can I tell you this this morning when water stops moving water becomes stagnant. I can tell you this in our lives spiritually speaking when we quit going forward in the things of God we're missing out we're becoming stagnant we're not growing now in his will and his purpose but God desires of you and I a relationship God desires of you and I a divine fellowship I can tell you friend there's been times in this preacher's walk with God it's got hard there have been times that it's got tough but there's one thing that I can tell you about it as well. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is faithful. Amen. He's faithful and he cares about you and I. When the trials and the tests of this world get greater and bigger than I can handle and they become larger than life sometime, I can go to the Father that's above it all and I can get humble before God and get in a prayer meeting and heaven come down and our life be changed and challenged and God be glorified to it all. Brother, sister, he's worthy this morning of our praise. They'd come into this place and they'd sit there. How could we now sing here in the midst of this place? Child of God, can I tell you that when we begin to worship him and we begin to praise him, we'll pick up that harp again and we'll say, God, pour your spirit out one more time that the spirit of the Lord Lord, may have liberty and freedom in this life of mine. Lord, that you might work where I'm at. The trial may be tough. The situation may be hard. But oh God, open the window of heaven in my soul and flood me, God, with the blessings of the Holy Ghost that the power of heaven may have free course in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can tell you, friend, it is there that we'll take the old harp down from the willow limb and say, I will gladly sing of the Lord's song right in the midst of adversity. Friend of mine, I don't know where you may be today. I don't know what you may be bound down with, but I can tell you, I know the one that can set you free. Amen. I know the one that can deliver you. I know the one that can make you free and make you free indeed. Amen. There was three of them on a cross but one of them was our Lord. Amen. One of them was Jesus Christ. They took all of them down after their death. They placed them probably in a tomb or a grave or put them out there somewhere. But I can tell you, friend, Jesus Christ, the Bible said he rose on the third day with victory over over death, hell, and the grave. He's no longer in a borrowed tomb, but seated at the right hand of the heavenly Father in a seat and for you and I. I can tell you, brother, this morning, sister, this morning, don't allow the enemy of your soul to talk you into hanging your harp up and stopping your song, but say, no, sir, I'll sing unto the glory of the King of kings and the Lord of lords because he's worth thee of my praise. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord. He's worthy to be praised. The Bible said he inhabits the praises of his people. And I don't know about you, but I claim to be one of them. 
by the river of Babylon. There we sit down. We sat down. The word said, and yea, we wept when we remembered Zion, when we remembered home. We wept. Oh, God. Friend, they looked back and they could only remember what was behind. They could remember the home. They could remember the homeland. And the Bible said they wept when they remembered it. But I can tell you this morning, regardless of the place you're at physically or the regardless of the place you're at spiritually, there's life in Jesus Christ. There's life in Jesus Christ. I look out there in this world and I was reading this morning about that life and the life in Christ and I want you to know, friend, when we choose that life, we choose to live. But if we don't choose that life, then we've chose to die. I want to choose him. Amen. I thought of he said when he came to the tomb of his friend Lazarus I thought about what Jesus said when he spoke to the tomb and he told Lazarus to come forth. Lazarus came forth out of the grave he's been dead a while now. Everybody's supposing that he's going to smell and not going to be a very pretty sight but what did Jesus say to them? Jesus said loose him and let him go. Loose him and set him free. He was still still wound in the old grave cloth. He was still wound up in the preparation for burial there, but Christ said, loose him and let him go. Can I tell you something my friend, when you and I got right with God and we prayed through wherever it was at an old fashioned altar or if it's out on a ridge by a white oak tree, but when we prayed through and the spirit of God moved on the inside and the Lord began to moved there. What did he do for you and I? He loosed us from the death of this old sinful flesh. Amen. He loosed us from that and he set us free in his life. Brother, can I tell you this this morning? When we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ, the Bible said truly all things are possible to those which believe. So I was praying, meditating and reading through the word, the scripture this morning. God began to deal with me on some things. There's some folks in this house dealing with some issues. You went with this just as far today as you can possibly go. You backed up and you said this is it. Here's the harp. My friend, don't hang it up. God passed by Jasper First Assembly this morning. Amen. So don't give up on me. Oh, the song's still the same. Hallelujah. My God. Friend, you're somebody's getting a hold of that. Just let it soak in. My friend, he's in our midst to do great things this morning. Lord, I just want what you want. Don't quit now. Several, several years ago, I was preaching camp meeting at Crossroads. I'm sure Brother Kenny and Sister Linda's there. We all used to go out there a lot about every night. And we was there preaching that night and got laid on my heart. And I'd never... Never thought about it like this. And I was preaching on running the race. As I was preaching that night, God just dropped into my heart. There's been a lot of people along this walk that I've known down here I've been to church with for the last 27, 28 years and even prior to that when I was a kid growing up uh, in the house of God, they've been people that I've been in church with. That's already made the crossing. But I, I told some folks last night, I said they've already run the race, but I've got mine to do. Amen. I can tell you something, friend. I got to thinking about that that night of preaching. I got to thinking about them old saints of God, Brother Kenny. That's done made the cross and standing on the sideline. They see, they know where we're at. They're cheering us on, saying, son, keep right on, keep on going. Oh, 
hold on, hold on. You ain't got far to go. This race is not much longer. Keep on keeping on. What are they saying? Don't hang your harp up, but worship him, praise him, glorify him. You say, preachers, all that necessary. I can tell you it's necessary to the life of a spiritual being. Amen. I can tell you it's necessary when we worship him. Why is that? Because it draws us into the realm of the fellowship of God. Amen. I know people say, oh, you don't need to do all that. I'm going to tell you something, friend. You worship God, you get a hunger for that. You get a hunger for the things of God. You go over here to any kind of event. Man, they, they, they get in there, they, they come in there to, to, to see something happen. What do they do when the sports team makes a point? My word, I, I, I have been to a ball game in a long time, but they roar sometimes in the gym where you can't even hardly hear. Man, I mean, somebody just scored. Somebody made a point. They came there because they realized there's an event. There's something going to happen here. We want to see something. I can tell you something, friend. When we get hungry for the things of God like that, we'll see something. Hey, man. When we get the desire down within our heart again saying, Lord, I want you to move in my heart and in my life. You say, preacher, does God still do it? You better believe God still does it. When we get to the place that we desire him to move again, when we get to the place that we say, God, it's not my will, but thy will be done in my life. I can tell you this, God will begin to move. God will begin to remove and he will begin to move. Amen. Because the things that hinder you and I, he'll remove them out of the way and he'll get them out of our life. They'll not be important anymore. Why? Because he's, uh, he should be number one in our heart in our life. You go down here to an event. I've seen people carry signs, their banner. They go over here to this event, they scream and they holler. What'd they come for? What are they? They're proud their team or their individuals doing something. Can I tell you something, church? When God moves, we in the house of God are to be stirred that God moved again. <laughs> That God moved again in our midst. That God poured his spirit out again in our midst. They said, how can we ever sing? How can we do these? We've, we've, we've just stopped right here. Friend, pick your harp up this morning and worship him. How can we, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can we do that? How can we sing when everything seems like it's coming in again, man? How can we go on when it seems like this world has just absolutely collapsed around me and I can't even fight hardly for the breath of air? I can remember what God's done for me in the past. I can tell you, friend, folks, several years ago, I, it's, I don't even remember the, the year now, but it's been several now. I remember going through a time in my life like I'd never been in before. Things that, that I wasn't accustomed to. I, I've always been, as far as health goes, I've been so blessed with that. I, very, a, a little soreness now and then or get down my back now and then, things like that. Just to, on the big scheme of things, they're, they're not that large. But I can tell you that this time there was an event in my life that was large. And I begin to wonder, Lord, how's this going to work out? And how's this thing going to go? And how are we going to get through this and 
Man, I mean, you know, the enemy of our soul, he feeds you all kinds of things. And I thought, God, it, it, you know, if, if this transpires, I, you know, and I can realize a lot of things could go bad and a lot of things could go wrong, but God, it, you, know, I, you know, I could die from this and, and all of these things and all these things could happen. You know how, that, how the enemy feeds your soul? But I never forget what it's like when the peace of God that you don't understand where it came from, you don't understand anything about it, but all of a sudden there's a peace that settles in your soul that you realize that at that point God, whatever I'm faced with in this moment of time, with whatever I'm going through today, with whatever I go through tomorrow, with whatever I go through next week, God, there's a peace that's settled in my soul that I can worship you now and I can worship you then. I can tell you that's a hope that we have as men and women of God, that the peace that passes all understanding settle about us. I have stood before families and I prayed, God, give them the peace that they need to handle where they are right now. Because only God can give that. But I'll never forget what it felt like. I'll never forget what it felt like when, when it seemed like everything was falling apart to just realize that, that everything's going to be all right. I believe there's somebody in this house this morning, you're right there. You're right there in life. I'm going to tell you something. Don't let pride, don't let pride beat you out of what God has for you. Don't let the enemy of your soul trick you into, into thinking that God don't care about you and God don't love me and God could care less. I'm going to tell you, God loved you enough that he sent his only begotten son to this world to die for you and I. How much more could he do? How much more could he love you and I than loved us enough that he gave his son? How much more could Jesus love you and I that he gave his own life for us? Think about that. I can tell you, my friend, he loves you enough. And his desire is to touch you. His desire is to make a difference in your life. And he'll do that. Him alone. Him alone will do that. We're living in a society right now, and I'm seeing this more so than I believe I've ever saw. As long as I've walked with God, as long as I've been preaching this gospel, I'm seeing this right here more today than I ever have. I have never saw a spirit of depression in the world as strong as it is in the day in which we live. I have never saw people so unsettled, so, so burdened down with the cares of this life, so troubled with all sorts of measurable things, so, so broken, so, so cast down as I'm seeing in this day and age. I see people that are wringing their hands, wondering what we're going to do. Friend, he is the answer. When I don't know what I'm going to do, I still know he knows what I need. I don't know where life's taking me, but I still know he's in charge of life. He's in charge of death. He's in charge of these things in this life. If I give him the lead way and say, Lord, here it is. It's yours. Take this and then use me. But Lord, help me to get through this. For this reason and this reason alone, God, that you'd be glorified. God, that you'd be glorified. When I think about this this morning, we got, there's a lot of folks that are sick in body. There's a lot of folks that, that are dealing with all sorts of illnesses and all sorts of things. And I've prayed for people. I've prayed for a lot of people through the years that God would heal them and God's healed some. And, and I've prayed that God would heal them. But I've heard people pray that, Lord, heal me that I'd get better. That's good. But God, I want you to heal me 
that you could receive glory. God, I want you to heal me that if you've got any more work for me to do, if you've got something, Lord, that I can do, heal me, Lord, that I can do the work, God, that you've got for me to do. Lord, what would it be that you'd have me to do? What would it be that you'd have me to be? Where would you have me to go that I might be the light, Lord, that you'd have me to be to this old dark and a dying world? Lord, that I'd glorify you with every fiber of my being. Lord, that I'd worship you, that I'd worship you in song, that I'd praise you, God, that I'd glorify you. Lord, that I wouldn't let the enemy see, God, that I've taken everything and hanging it up on a willow limb and said, I'll just sit down. I will not. Child of God, that's exactly what they had done. They had just sat down. They had sat down by flowing rivers to listen to the brook. How many of you know what happens when you sit down? If you don't get up. You can get in one of these seats today. You can go home and get in your recliner. You can sit there. And you can sit there. You can drift off to sleep. You can wake up days. And if you stay in that thing for any length of time, there will come a time you will not be able to get up from there. Say, so, well, brother, I just sit down. I just sit down. And I could never get up. After staying in that place for that length of time, it may, it may take some shorter than others for any length of time. But all you got to do is just quit moving and just stop. I think about something that my dad told me years ago. Dad was a mechanic all my life. That's about all I can ever remember him doing that and driving trucks, just this, that, and the other, operating on equipment stuff of that nature. That's about all I could remember him doing. My dad always said this right here. He said, the hardest thing that they are on any piece of equipment, he said, is just letting it set. Just letting it set. He said, all you got to do is just park one. And he said, it'll just go down. All you got to do is just leave it alone. He said, he said, letting one set is harder than using it when you use it right. Now you think about it spiritually. If we allow this spiritual man to just set, what will happen to the inside? The fire that one time burned with a fervent pitch. The fire that one time ignited at the very slightest moving of the power of the Holy Ghost. The fire that one time would stir us to our feet begins to slowly and slowly and slowly burn down. And go down. And drift down. After a while, what was one time fire becomes ash. But oh, friend, may God stir us again and that we might burn for the glory of God. That the power of the Holy Ghost would rest inside of us again, church. That the power of the Holy Ghost would rest inside of us again. That we would have a desire to pray for people that's bound by sin. That we would have a desire to get sincere with God again and say, Lord, we're needing a revival. We need a move. We need an outpost. 
Lord. We need, Lord, we need things to happen. I can tell you when great things is going to happen in the child of God's life, it's when we draw a circle around our own self and we pray revival down in the midst of that circle. I can tell you this this morning, when you get to that point right there, then the glory of God's beginning to move in your life. When we get to this place saying, God, mold me and make me like you want me to be. Put me in the place, God, where you want me to be. That why, oh you, Lord, that you would receive all glory through everything that's done. Because he desires to move in your life. I'm closing this morning with this. Don't ever let the enemy of your soul talk you out of that. Don't ever let the devil tell you God don't want to touch you. Don't ever let the enemy of your soul tell you you can't touch heaven no more. Don't ever let him tell you you need to just stop worshiping. You need to just quit. You need to just sit down. There's no need in that. Don't ever let the enemy tell you that. Because when we do, if we're not very careful, we'll sit down by the rivers. We won't have a song and the instrument of praise be hung on a willow limb. Bow your heads with me this morning. Musicians, would you help me today in this service? <clears throat> oh, God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mm. My Lord. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I've done my best this morning to bring to you what I felt like the Lord spoke to my heart. But all morning long, ever since I've been up, I've just had this feeling in my heart hey some folks sitting in this building this morning you're dealing with the past you're wondering how in the world am I ever going to get past this right here Jesus said, Whomsoever the Son sets free is free indeed. I want you to know something this morning. There's freedom from that. God spoke to me this morning. There's some folks that's captive by some things. some folks that's captive by some things and they just they've tried everything that they can and know to do listen this one of them altar calls where it's going to take swallowing a big old lump square it your shoulders
saying, God, more than the pain of change, the pain of staying the same is greater. Lord, I want you to change me. Because I can't do this. Before we move this morning in this altar service, I wonder if there's anybody in this house you're lost and you're undone without Jesus Christ. Right now, if you left this walk of life and stepped down into eternity, you know very well where you'd spend it. But this morning, you won't make things right in your life. You won't make things right. Would you just get up this morning and come? So we know in what manner we're praying because we're fixing to move into a different direction in this altar service. But if there's anybody here, this altar's open. this house and at some point and somewhere I have no idea Holy Spirit, this hey some folks it's dealing with some hurt in your life Sit down. Every time you get close to God, the enemy throws this back. And you remember it. And that worship at one time was there. It's only a heart. Hold a will, only. Worship at one time was there. It's not there. This altar's open this morning.